everyone, Sukadora Gaming here. I'm playing a really fun game called A Roaring Affair. And it's a visual novel. And uh, of course you're in the circus. And I believe it's during the time period of the 1920s or 30s. And uh, it just, you can tell by the music, it's just fantastic. And I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. And I hope you do too. I'm just going to turn the music down just a little bit. I just wanted you guys to hear a little bit of it because it was just, it's really good. So let's start the game. I'm hanging high above the ring, looking down on the empty seats that would soon be filled with an eager audience. My hands grip tight the corde lazi, the long rope that hangs from the rafters falling meters and meters down to the dirt floor. A lesser acrobat would be scared if she let go. She would most certainly fall to her death. But I'm not worried. Why would I be? My family and I, we had been invited to participate here at the, oh, it's 1800, sorry, at the 1858 World Fair. A once in a lifetime opportunity, an event to showcase our greatest talents. And we, the starry troop, we're going to put on a show that the audience would never forget. Oh, I just have to say there's going to be romance in this, of course. So hold on to your hats. It's going to be a, a wonderful circus. I lean forward and then back, swinging my body. Oh, I like that effect. Oh, maybe I'll get a little seasick, though. <laughs> swinging my body to move the rope to my whims. Gradually, I pick up momentum, the rope now swaying in the air. Forward. Back. Inching centimeters closer and closer to the trapeze bar, right outside my range. Gaining speed, my hair now blowing with the movement of the wind. And soon, the trapeze comes closer, just in range. Oh, look at you! Aren't you adorable? Oh, you're so cute! <laughs> look at those eyes! <laughs> Wow. It's like enemy. I shouldn't call her Amy. I should call her enemy. Amy. There! I leap completely airborne for a second and then I grab the trapeze bar, letting the momentum swing my legs under and then upward. I do a full roll to and lock my legs onto the trapeze bar, using the momentum to launch myself up, grabbing the ropes on opposite sides of the bar. With a flourish, I finally land fully on my feet, standing on top of the swinging trapeze bar and looking out onto the empty seats below. Nailed it. Don't think they said that in the 1800s, though. And here's where the crowd erupts into cheers. Yes, yes, it's true. The amazing acrobat Amy never fails. And on your way out, don't forget about the gift shop. I look down. There's no crowd yet, but my little antics have attracted one fan. My mom. Aww. Wow! Amazing! Acrobat Amy, can I have your autograph? I'm so in awe how you can avoid your chores. Please teach me. I stick my tongue out at her, but take the hint. Building up momentum, I swing to the closest scaffold and quickly disembark. From there, it's just down the ladder and back to the safe and frankly boring ground. Oh no, I kind of like the ground beneath my feet. Now, where would you want me to sign, lady? How about right here? She pulls out a very familiar wooden brush, one that I had purposely left behind on the table. There's even a few stray blonde hairs in the comb. Oh, but that looks so valuable. I really couldn't. I must insist. She all but shoves it into my hands and gives me that look. You know, the mom look. She's pretty good at it, but then again, she's had eight years of practice. When her and dad first found me, caught stealing out of their wagon, she had no idea how to make such a passive-aggressive look. But now, she's an expert. Can't deny that. Oh, you're an orphan. Fine, I concede. You caught me. 
I'll leave Henry's coffer in your capable hands. I'm honored. She nods at me and heads off to the stables, where we're keeping our horses. It takes a lot to run the starry troop, but we make it work. Well, mostly mom and dad make it work, and I try my best to avoid the boring stuff. Speaking of which... I dip around mom and head to the backstage, where us and the other performers are housing all of our equipment. And as I enter the room, I see him. The fourth star of the starry troop. Oh, baby! Kitty. Big kitty! Oh. oh! He should be the star of the troop. He's so precious! Till he bites your head off. Monsieur Henry! Are you ready for your makeup, Monsieur? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there's a, like, kind of like a weird <laughs> in the background. <laughs> I think that's supposed to sound like a lion. Oh, don't you just love these illustrations? Aren't they just so... just enchanting. They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, just try not to. Can't even finish my sentence when Henry shoves his head. Oh, look at his little face. He's even smiling. Straight into my chest, demanding scratches. I think that was supposed to be scratches, not scritches. <laughs> Jeez, you really don't know your own size. You could have knocked me over. Henry starts to purr, and I honestly can't be too, much, too mad at him. Do lions purr? What's that? You're sorry? I suppose I can forgive you. Who could not forgive that cute and big adorable face, kitty cat face? He lets out a tiny meow. Meow. I don't think lions meow. And starts to rub against the brush in my hand. He sure does love his brushings, even if it's a pain in the neck for me. I oblige his- oh my goodness, I would just love to like, brush a lion. I would brush him all day. Just brush, 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 brush. <laughs> Kitty cat brush. I oblige his request and finally start to rake the brush through his hair. Trying my hardest to- you mean his fur? Trying my hardest to work through any mats. It was a long and frankly boring process to go through all that hair of his, fur of his. I mean, you can't even tell what part you brushed and which you haven't. Real annoying. Do my eyes deceive me or is that my daughter doing her chores? I wouldn't call this a chore. I would call this like, heaven. <laughs> Give me a big pussycat brush. I lift my head out from under Henry's mane and see my dad. A big jovial guy, a real mountain of a man. When I think of a lion tamer, he's the only thing that comes to mind. It was like he was born for the role. Honestly, I'm lucky to have him as my dad. I didn't have much of a choice. I was practicing my routine when Mum found me. Well, I appreciate it. I was coming over to brush Henry since I figured you wouldn't have time. See, he's nice. Too nice. He knows I'm blowing off my chores and doesn't say anything about it. He lets in customers free of charge sometimes. Not much of a businessman, but one hell of a performer. Good thing Mum's around to do the bookkeeping. Oh, I would love to be a part of this family. Big lion, you know? Except, not, no, no, I would not be on the trapeze. No, 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 no. <laughs> you couldn't even get me up there for all the candy in the world, you know? I would not be on the trapeze. Maybe I'd be in the cannon, you know? Like, like shoot me out of the cannon, or I could be like one of the like freak shows, you know? <laughs> oh, the shortest, smallest woman. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry, I'm just having a cup of my tea here. Oh, it's sure good with a little bit of honey. Oh, did you miss me, Henry? Oh, I missed you too. The mountain of a man and his lions start to nuzzle each other. I sneak the brush into my dad's hand, the one not giving a good scratch under Henry's chin and start to head off. Or I would have if my mom hadn't caught me by my arm. More chores? We still need to pick up our time assignment with the front desk. Amy, if you're not doing anything else... Uh, of course I'm not doing anything else. She can clearly see the brush in Dad's hand. I force a smile back at her. 
Well, no use getting around it now. Anything get out of this back room and the million things my mom can't find can't find me for me to do. Yeah, yeah, I'll be right back. I run off before my mom can say anything back to that. This backstage is a bit of a mess with all the different groups set to perform. So in order to make it out of the room, I have to squeeze by a pair of mules, a box of top hats, some chickens, a couple of pigs, and finally our llama to get to the door. My outfit picks up a few feathers here and there from the ordeal, but I quickly wipe them off and step into the banquet hall. And immediately run into... Hmm. Oh, ew. <laughs> Look at that snot dripping from his nose. Gross. And there's food nearby. Mm, look at the big turkey or chicken in the back. Give me one of those drumsticks. Ah, chew. A man who had just violently sneezed on me. Gross. Excuse me. <laughs> Sniff. What do you want? I'm gonna give him a nasally voice. He sounds like a jerk. Looks like a jerk. It's a man wearing a very, very nice suit, but I barely noticed because he seemed to be fighting the world's worst cold. What do I want? You just sneezed on me. Sniff. I did not chew. I dodged that one. Now that he's lost the element of surprise, he's easy to anticipate. You literally just sneezed. Bucket of goobers, just get away from me. Are you implying that I would be so rude to sneeze onto a guest? I've forgotten all about what mom had asked me to go pick. Oops, and that's my voice, sorry. <laughs> I've forgotten all about what Mom had asked me to go pick up, not this random guy in my face. Ew, look, he's still drooling from his nose. And he's even asking me a question. Probably not his smartest move, and one I can't help but taking advantage of. He could at least get a Kleenex or, you know, hang kinky. Oh, look at that! I love the choices. They're like tickets to the fair. Ha ha ha. And me always pick the wrong one, a wrong ticket. I literally don't have time for idiots. Yeah, he seems like an idiot. No, I'm implying that the buffet table that the buffet table sneezed on me. Is your nose planning to enter a triathlon? <laughs> That's a bad pun, Amy. You're not supposed to have good puns, you know. I'm I'm the queen of puns. Um, I'm gonna say this one. Is your nose planning to enter triathlon? <laughs> Excuse me. Got these like cold eyes looking. Because it sure is running a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to make a joke, dude. He didn't like it. Oh, he's one of those. Okay, maybe this is why mom keeps telling me to stick to acrobatics. How dare you, Mish? He squints at me for a second, looking at me and then what I was wearing. Whoever you are. I'll have Jules. I'll have you know you just insulted Jules Bavard. Now to the Bavard fashion empire. I don't know. You look kind of gaudy to me. Bavards? We won't forget this egregious slight. Mark my words. And I won't forget your... Your ugly, nasty behavior, Jules. He dramatically turns and sulks away, all the while dabbing at his face with a kerchief. Can't you take a joke, dude? I just stand there more shell-shocked than I care to admit. The Blavards. Oh boy, I knew the Port of Rocks, World Fair, was going to be big, but I guess I never realized just how big. Mom's a huge fan of their clothing, and I've even tried to force me to wear a bunch of their designs when I was younger. But man, was that clothing itchy and expensive. I prefer just to make my own costumes, thanks. Clothing itchy, ew, what do they put in it? These? My, my, what a prickly fellow that Lord Bovart is. Prickly. It's more like... More like... <laughs> gooey or gross. Snot running down his nose. Ooh, look at you. 
A man slides up to me, occupying the spot where Jules had been standing, and with him comes an overwhelming aroma. I can barely breathe. I discreetly cough <laughs> into my elbow because I'm not a heathen. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a heathen? What? <laughs> okay, so people that don't cough into your elbows are heathens? <laughs> Don't you agree, miss? Sorry, what? I was referring to that Jules fellow. Money is no excuse for such poor behavior. He was in the wrong. Oh, he was watching me. Mmm, yep, yep. That's all you could say, Amy. You sound like you're 12. I just stare at him. He smiles at me but doesn't say anything. What a weird conversation. What a weird series of conversations. At least he's not sneezing. To break the weird silence, he holds out his hand, I take it. Godfrey. Amy. <laughs> no, like, hi, my name is Godfrey, or hey, my, hi, my name is Amy. This is the 1800s. You're not really supposed to be running around by yourself, either. Strange. It is a pleasure meeting you, Amy. If he gives you any more trouble, him or anyone else, please come find me. I can help you. What, you're gonna deck him? <laughs> and his snotty nose? Uh. I know it must be difficult dealing with men like him. If you are in need of anything, anything really. Oh my. Uh. He lets go of my hand and gives a deep bow. You've been in mine, and with that I must bid you adieu. And he leaves. Weird. Really, really weird. I take a second then, too, just to make sure no one else is waiting in line to talk to me. When no one else miraculously appears, I head on out to the front gate. See what trouble I can get into. The woman at the organizing office is tearing out her hair by the time I arrive. You! Are you the starting troop? The pickup time was an hour ago. Where have you been? Oops, yeah, yeah, I'm here, thanks. I nab the card I can see in front of her with my family's name on and escape quickly before I can hear what she says. Or at least that was my plan because I can hear her shouting out after me even as I go back down the path. Wow, is she still going at it? You think I murdered someone, not fail to pick up our assignment within a timely fashion? Oh, I was like wondering what is that noise? I mean, at this point, her nagging is starting to sound like the discrushed call of one very small baby chicken. Which is very specific, huh? I whirl around and look back the way I came. Yeah, the woman behind the counter is back to shuffling around papers and most definitely not yelling at me. I look to my left. A guard or two are moving a barricade around, but not much else. And to my right, oh yeah, the chirping is getting louder, but there's nothing here but a few bushes. Hmm, I smell a mystery. I smell chicken. I step forward and pull a few of the branches up and... Aww, look at that little... It's like a little dumpling. The two little eyes. I step forward and pull a few of the branches up and... Find myself face to face with a tiny baby chick. Aw, cheep cheep. Oh no, what are you doing here? Is that music too loud, folks? I hope it's not too loud. Let's see. Kind of jazz. Getting those jazz hands. No, it's probably too. Here we go. Rushes up to me and cuddles up to my shoe. Oh no, it's too cute! Oh, are you lost, little chick? Where's your mommy? Cheep cheep. Mm hmm, yes I did, I see. Did you get separated? Oh, she's talking like chip talk. I like, can't understand. <laughs> she's the Dr. Doolittle. I pick the little girl up, girl, fella. Well, she's a girl now, and start ambling back towards the closest guardhouse. Maybe they've got a lost and found for a check. The building happens to be only a few steps away. Lucky me, and I knock on the door forcefully. No one answers. Hello? Anyone here? 
Just as I'm calculating my odds of survival, if I were to go back to the event planner woman, the door swings open. Hello? Wow, look at your outfit. Are you like the guardsman to the queen? It's a large man wearing a very nice uniform. Oh, um, hi. Doesn't say a word, just looks at her. He's just staring at me. That's been happening a lot lately. I mean, does anyone normal work here? I, um, was wondering if there's a lost and found somewhere around here. I found a baby chick, and I was hoping to return her to her mother. <laughs> the little girl nearly catapults, I mean, the little chick nearly catapults up from my hands and straight to the man's chest, letting out a barrage of cries. They're happy cries. Cheep, 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 cheep. <laughs> Lulu. He cups the chick in his hands and gives her a few pats. She settles down. Are you the mother? He nods and moves the chick to his shoulder. You mean father? Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> the little yellow, like, looks like a little bun witch. A little yellow bun witch is sitting on his, on his, uh, uniform. Thank you for returning her. I found her out in the bushes. She must have fell off. He nods to where she's perched on his shoulder. Doesn't say much. He's a man of few words. Ah, oh, well, good she's back home. Sometimes those are the best kind. But maybe you don't just put her back on your shoulder if she can fall off. Doesn't say a word. Strong and silent type. And he's back to just staring at me. I think I've had, like, a single normal conversation since I woke up this morning. Well, um, I should probably get back to my troop. Claude! Claude! Where are my pants? Another man comes running up behind the chatterbox, currently taking up most of the entryway. I can't see much inside due to said chatterbox, but I'm quite glad as I don't want to bear myself that this man has indeed lost his pants. They took them again! Did you see them? Look in the trash! That's where they tossed them last time! We have a guest. One moment! I hear a series of increasingly vulgar curses being thrown around inside in that silence. The chatterbox steps to the side and I'm finally greeted by the second guard. He seems friendly with a nice easy smile and bright eyes. He's much shorter than the chatterbox, but he has an immaculate uniform. It's sort of blinding me as the sun is right behind me. And as for his pants, they look to be very comfortable pajama bottoms. Zephyr. Good day! How can we assist you? My name is Zephyr, and my colleague here is Claude. Nothing. Um, I just came to return his chick. I nod to the little chick who seems to have fallen asleep in all the commotion. Oh, oh, how very noble of you! Thank you so much! In the future, feel free to drop off any lost items to the closest event booth. There's no need for you to travel all the way out here to the guardhouse. Oh, the guardhouse. And have to interact with that woman again? Yeah, no thank you. Zephyr's eyes latch onto the file I have in my hand, the one that same woman had given me. Oh, are you a performer? What, does my outfit not give that away? Yeah, my family and I are the Starry Troop. I am their acrobat. Wow, that's really nice. I'm sure you're able to see the entire crowd from up there. Yep. Well, I'm sure they all enjoy your performance. Uh, yeah, I am the amazing acrobat Amy, after all. I flash the two of them my biggest grin. Zephyr just looks kind of nervous, while Claude's face is the same as usual. Tough crowd. Just then, the bell tower marks the turn of the hour, which means... I took about an hour to do this errand Mom gave me. Oh man, I am really late. Sorry, I gotta go. Bye! I run off, hoping my mom hasn't noticed I hadn't returned. There's only one act left before us. I check the strings on my costume one final time and stretch my legs. All right, we got this. Or you got this, Amy. The crowd has been energetic all night, which was a good sign. 
I look back over my shoulder. Dad is right behind me with Henry, who's scratching his collar. Mom takes up the rear with her horses. Me, Dad, and then Mom. How we loosely went, just like normal. Just have to perform as well as I always do. How are you feeling, Amy? Huh? Fine, fine, of course. Unusual of you to have stage fright, though I suppose it is a big crowd. A big crowd? It was the biggest we've ever performed in front of. The biggest event in a well-renowned affair. I know you'll do well, though, just like you normally do. He pats me on the shoulder and I grab his hand, squeezing it. Dad didn't need to adopt me. He could have could have turned me over to the law. I had been stealing from them after all. But oh, I was so glad that he hadn't. I was so glad he was such a big softy, and I'd do anything for him. I took one deep breath. The crowd was clapping, signaling the end of the previous event. I scratched Henry under his collar. He was still scratching there and gave Dad a hug. Knock him dead, Amy. Let's make sure I don't knock myself dead first, Dad. <laughs> Leave it to me. I'm flying, my brakes dragging behind me as I swing back and forth on the Corde Lazi, the music below coming to a crescendo. Oh god, something's gonna happen. And there I jump and hang, completely airborne. The crowd erupts in gas. But never fear, the trapeze bar comes swinging into view and I grab it. Just like in practice, I let the momentum swing my legs under and then up over the bar, shifting my grip from on the bar to the ropes as my feet come down on the bar. The momentum takes me back now and I swing my torso up, up, now climbing the ropes on either side of the bar. And then finally I strike a pose, showing off my biggest grin. The crowd erupts in cheers and I wave to them all. From up here it was true, just like Zephyr said. I could see the full crowd. I stand high up above them and look out, waiting for the applause to die down. Directly in front of me, I can see an older looking woman with the most crusty scroll I've ever seen. Around her neck is a gigantic emerald necklace that really brightens up that skull. Directly to her left is a moosey, mousy looking woman with brown hair who seems to be fidgeting with her pamphlet. The scrolling woman's right is, let me guess, Oh boy. Snooty boy. It's a guy with a cold, a Jules Blavore. He's looking at me with a face that makes it seem like he just ate something rancid. His eyes are a little red, but he doesn't seem to be constantly sneezing. Maybe he got over his cold. I stick my tongue out at him, but I doubt he can see it from all the way up here. Serves him right. If he's sitting next to the scolding woman, that must be Josephine Blavar, head of the Blavar family in their fashion empire. Their clothes might look pristine, but it's a shame they don't have expressions to match. Sour family. And what would you know, right in the back of their section, I can see the stoic guardsman Clau Claude. Oh, he's sure, like, look at this outfit, like, reveals nothing to the imagination, it's just sticking to him. <laughs> Maybe Claude. Am I saying that right? Claude? Clade? Claude? Claude? Should give the Blavors a lesson on keeping a straight face. Finally, the applause dies down, and the spotlight that had been illuminating me shifts focus as my dad and Henry march into the arena. My dad towers over Henry, holding his arms out as Henry follows Digital Dillingy behind him. He bends down and motions Henry into his first trick. The lion leapfrogs over my dad's back and runs up along the guardrails, separating the arena from the crowd. They continue on this way, dad directing Henry over and under obstacles, showing just how docile and obedient he was. It was no surprise for me, Henry was just a giant kitten, but to the crowd, seeing such a ferocious animal follow a man's instructions was a show. They especially liked it when Henry would walk along the perimeters of dangerous creatures so close to the audience but completely focused on the task of following its master's orders. Dad pulls out a ball from his pocket, shows the crowd, and throws it to the edge of the arena. 
This was one of our guests' favorite tricks. Henry would return with the ball and Dad would balance it on his nose. But this time, Henry doesn't go after the ball. He's sitting and scratching his collar. That's weird. I glance up at the audience. They seem enraptured and don't notice the mistake. Jules has turned to his mother and is whispering something to her. The mousy girl to Josephine's left is looking through her purse for something. Behind them, Claude appears to be guiding an older gentleman to a seat. It could be like, maybe they're, maybe Henry's wearing one of the, the itchy collars from the Blafour family. <laughs> Wait, is that? Yeah, it's the Godfrey guy. Godfrey guy. I can't believe he missed, he missed my performance. I look back down and see Henry returning with the ball. Good. Looks like the hiccup hasn't distracted him. Dad has the biggest smile on his face, but he's a professional. If there was a mistake, you would never been able to tell. Dad takes the ball, shows it to the audience, balances on his own nose and throws it to Henry, who catches it with his own nose. The crowd laughs and claps. Henry and Dad pass the ball back and forth a bit to the crowd's amusement. Finally, it's the end of their routine. Just as planned, Dad throws the ball toward the crowd. The, cr the ball lands right outside the box, sitting, seating the Blavors. Henry pads over, picks up the ball, and shows it off to Josephine. This elicits a small s smile from her, but her grimace from earlier still remains. I look back to Dad, who's looking up at me. He's smiling and gives me a little thumbs up. This is going well. Or it was supposed to go well. Uh-oh. Next, Henry was supposed to return with the ball. That's how this set would finish. But that didn't happen. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I don't see what happens in that moment. I'm looking at Dad when screams erupt from the audience. I look back and I freeze. What I see is this. Henry is leaning up towards the seat with the Blavors. Josephine is on the ground. The Mosi women and Jules are out of their seats looking at Josephine. And then the lights are cut. Henry! Dad! I think their show was sabotaged. And as a mass, a mass of bodies rushes out from behind stage. Guardsmen, in the dim light, I can see them as they surround Henry, surround Dad. I'm hanging suspended up above the arena, too far away to help. I'm forced to watch as I see my father being led away. I see Henry being thrown into a cage. I reach out, I cry out to them, but nothing. There's nothing I can do. I swing there, high above everything, and just watch. Uh-oh. They've been sabotaged. Um, the police are now involved. Dad and Henry have been placed into custody for an attempt on Josephine Blavar's life. What? We're standing in the bank banquet hall watching guards move in and out of the rooms. I haven't seen Dad or Henry since they ushered them off after the attack. Attack. Henry would never attack anyone, never. I've known him the whole time I've been living with the Starry Troop, and he never so much as nibbled. I just can't believe this. The guards are asking us to allow them to continue their investigation, after which... Mom looks tired, but was holding it together more than I expected. As for me, I've never been so angry in my entire life. Attacked, Henry, by my dad's orders? Ridiculous! Absolute hogwash! I wasn't about to let this stand. I'm going to investigate. They asked us to keep out of the way. You think I'm going to start following instructions now? They can't keep me out, even if they tried. Well, I was hoping you'd say that. Get Dad and Henry out. Clear their names. We can't be the Starry Troop without them. Who cares about the Starry Troop? Like, I'm more worried about their, you know, about her father and Henry being, like, thrown into jail or worse. Or you. I smile at her and give her a thumbs up. A guard comes over to talk with her and I slip away. Standing in the back of the room, keeping out of people's notice, I decide to finish my things myself. Now, where do I want to focus my investigations? Um, I think you should investigate the Blavor seats. Something, is, something caused the lion to like 
maybe meat or something. Right, if I want to get to the bottom of this, the best place to start was the crime scene. There's a large crowd of noisy people crowding the entrance to the audience seats. Everyone wanted to get a glimpse of what the police had roped off, but hey, I actually had a reason to get in there. I'd get closer and try to peer over the shoulders of those in front of me. Onlooker one, I heard that she died. I'm pretty sure she just fainted. Well, she could have died. I hear that they, they can't find the jewel on her necklace. Uh-oh. Maybe the lion ate it. Would that digest well? The one better put a litter box in that jail cell. Even standing on my tippy toes, oh, it was always about the gemstone. I wouldn't trust that Godfrey fella, because he just left right in the middle. I wouldn't trust him at all. Nothing. Well, it was time to get physical. Excuse me, excuse me, coming through. I roughly elbow my way through the crowd, ignoring the glare as people are throwing me. I make it to the other side of the door and... And you. No, not you. And sneezed on again. Maybe he's allergic to, to lie at cats. You! As luck would have it, it's Jules Boulevard. You, at you. You have a lot of nerve barging in here, at you. Stop sneezing on me. Then stop getting close to me, at you. What is it you're covered with anyway? Covered with? I look down at my outfit. Everything is right in place. I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, except. I pick off one of Henry's hairs that had attached itself to my bodice. Lifting up the hair seems to elicit a reaction from Jules, always allergic to cats. Achoo! Achoo! Get that! Achoo! Away! Achoo! People around us are all starting to look. I decide to put the man out of his misery and pocket the hair. Jules illocally pulls out a handkerchief and blows his nose. Ugh, now I can breathe. Are you allergic to lions? Lions? Well, cats, but I suppose... He stops mid-sentence and his eyes lock onto mine. Now, why would you have a lion hair attached to your outfit? Uh, because I brushed him? You! Are you part of the starry troop? The guests directly surrounding us all look my way. Did, did no one know that I was the amazing acrobat Amy? Come on, I'm a star! Yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm here to clear my dad and Henry's name. Henry? Our lion, our lion that we hand trained and reared. He's a baby, a pushover. I'm telling you, there has to be something else that happened. He caved to his bestial side and attacked my mother. Points over to the side of the room. From here, I can see the overturned chairs where the family are sitting. I can see scattered links of silver, the rem remnants of Josephine Blavore's necklace. This couldn't have been the handiwork of Henry. My gut was telling me something was different, something off. Jules blows his nose obnoxiously loudly, interrupting my train of thought. Ugh, I'm trying to think here. Hmm, something different like... Henry kept scratching. That's right! He kept scratching! What's this? During this set, there must have been something that was aggravating him. How does this prove that this lion did not attack my mother? Maybe he was in pain, or like, you and your allergies. Maybe it was an accident and Henry was really just trying to scratch his neck or something. Hmm. But ugh, I mean, even if Henry had accidentally attacked someone, he still attacked someone just knowing it was an accident doesn't make it any better. And what would the police do with a line that couldn't be controlled? Oh. The same thing they do to some street urchin caught stealing from a wagon. I shake my head and I can't give up. I have to save Dad and Henry and... Jules is looking at me with a serious look of surprise and the first one I've seen on his face. So, this lion of yours was having an allergic reaction and accidentally attacked my mother. I, well, I said like your allergies, not that he was having an allergic reaction. Hmm. And well, I wasn't there. I don't know what exactly he did. 
But Jules was. He was sitting right next to the woman when she was attacked. Ooh, I wonder if it was Jules. Tell me what happened. People kept telling me that Henry attacked your mother, but attacked. What exactly did he do? Jules looks over his shoulder and back to me. He takes a step closer to me and plasters on such a fake-looking smile. Yes, it's quite lovely how the samples turned out. This spring collection will be quite the talk of the town. Huh? Isn't that right, Lady Amy? You were asking me about our upcoming spring collection. Well, what is he talking about? Oh, wow. Okay, he's clearly trying to communicate something to me, but all I can see is a man trying to contort his face into the biggest grin. I glance over his shoulder and see a man just on the other side. He's got a glass of adult grape juice in one hand and a little notepad in the other. A notepad? Adult grape juice? Is that supposed to be wine? <laughs> they call it adult grape juice now? Jules grabs my elbow, escorting me back out the door to the banquet. After we make it past the tangle of guests crowding the doorway and empties out, we nearly have the whole room to ourselves. You know, I have no idea about any of your upcoming collections, right? He pauses and eyes my outfit up and down. A shame. Hey! Well, he's starting to loathe this guy. He. Well, sorry if I'm not wearing designer. I actually have to be able to move in my outfits in order to perform. Hmm, is that so? He eyes my outfit again, but in a more lazy way. I can tell he's taking that in a bit more information. My mom, uh, she's actually a big fan. Yes, we do perform well in the mum demographic. Well, well, good for you, but I could never stand to wear any of your clothing. It's just really stiff. Hmm, and noted. Thank you for your feedback. I'll keep it in mind. Wait, I'm trying to solve a mystery here. Gas, stop distracting me. You, why did you pull me out of there? Puts his hand on my shoulder. I'm about to throw him off when he whispers in my ear. There are many here in attendance tonight who would like to see nothing more than my family to make a fool of themselves. Vultures, if you ask me, profiting off of my family's misfortune. Misfortune? If you say that you're lying. He reflexively pulls his handkerchief from his pocket. Those are some serious allergies. It's really as tame as you've been suggesting. And this has all simply been a misunderstanding. Nothing would make me happier to hear. Wait, he's willing to help me? The guy who kept sneezing on me? I... I see. So, what can I do to help you uncover the truth? Well, actually answering my question for once, before you so rudely change the subject. Rudely? I'll have you know that this has been a very graceful diversion. Though I suppose grace isn't something you'd have any appreciation for. Ooh, he's rude. <laughs> Says the guy with mismatched cufflinks. Mismatched? Yeah, and his outfit too. Ugh, so gaudy. Lim what is that lime? He looks like the Joker, lime green and red. And <laughs> but getting back to the point. Start from the beginning. What exactly happened? It was during the second act of the starry troop. The acrobat had finished. You, I suppose. You suppose? I'm a star. My mother was in good spirits. I was likewise. My mother's maid, Colette, had been quiet that day, yet attendant. Maid? Yes, she was seated with us to the other side of my mother. Ah, that must have been the mousy woman I had seen. But yes, the large man came out with his lion. They had thrown a ball back and forth between the two. Oh, there's cute little Henry. He's so adorable. Who could not love that face? Then the lion turned took the ball and threw it toward us. It landed at my mother's feet. She had bent down to pick it up. The lion had jumped up on top of the guardrails. He had leaned in toward my mother, his face not inches from her hand. Now my nose had begun to run, so I pulled out my handkerchief. Colette had moved to my mother's side and yelled a word of warning. I had to sneeze, and just as I turned away, my mother screamed. When I looked back, he had attacked. 
So did he bite her? Was there blood? Yeah, how crass. But no, I can't say I saw blood. And I couldn't see if he had bitten her or not. He's a very large creature with a fair bit of hair. Tell me about it. No, my mother was on the ground with the lion standing over her. Colette was trying to pull the lion off of her. And then the guards arrived. Someone pushed her mother, his mother, and grabbed the... Or they grabbed the necklace off her neck. And the rest is history. I see. So regarding your testimony... Colette had moved to your mother's side when the lion appeared over the guardrail. Yes, I think she had not been paying attention earlier and was not aware that the lion had come so close to us. She, she missed Henry running on the guardrails? Colette had been distracted as of late. Oh? To be frank, my mother has been wanting to find a new maid, but ah, uh, I talked her out of it. It's a shame to lose such help over a few bad days. Hmm, that sounded like a loaded subject if I've ever heard one. Mother was holding on a ball to the Lady Josephine was holding the ball out to the lion. That is correct. Do we know where the ball is now? The police have it. I heard mention that it looked unremarkable. Hmm, right. And if something was off about the ball, my, da my dad would have caught it. I see. Sneezed. Cough, yes, and what of it? Hey, I'm just pointing out the fact that you missed the crucial moment because you had to sneeze. Maybe your sneeze even frightened Henry into running into your mom. What is the point of this conversation? I say we get you to sneeze in front of Henry and see if it scares him. You are insufferable. Think, though, what we've learned so far. Hmm, I see. Yes, and? Next, I want to get a closer look at the crime scene. I look back over to the crowd of people hogging the door. Sigh. Very well. People parked before the might of the Blavor name, so it was quite easy navigating back into the audience seats. I didn't even need to elbow people out of the way this time. We make it all the way to where Jules and his mother had been seated during the performance. Excuse me, sir, this area is off limits. The guardsman I know as Zephyr stops us. He's standing right in front of where Lady Josephine's chair had been. He's got a friendly smile at us. He's clearly trying his best. Uh-oh, here comes my Henry. My kitty cat. My tiger, baby. How's my boy? You a good boy? Give you a little screech. Give you a little scritches. <laughs> I mean scratches. <laughs> Just a little sip of tea. That's better. As far as his comrades, the four other guards stationed with him are all sitting around a makeshift table with what appears to be an in-progress jigsaw puzzle. They don't even look up from their game. Ahem, the Blavar family requests access to our belongings. Uh, um, so sorry, this is, um, it's, a. Uh... A few laughs from the guards around the table. Zephyr still has that smile on his face, but his shoulders start to slope downward. I kind of like Zephyr. Wish he was dateable. It's a cr crime scene. So? A few more laughs from the table. I simply request access to my mother's bag she had stashed under her seat. Her smelling salts are in there and requires them. It's, um, it might be, um, evidence? A lady smelling salts are going to be evidence? That enlists a few laughs from the other guards. You seem tense, guardsmen. Might you be interested in joining your comrades in their game? Another laugh. There, um, we're not... Colette. Lord Jules! I turn around and the mousy woman from early enters from a side entrance. It's Colette the maid. I can't find your mother's smelling salts. Might you know where they might be? Ah, uh, Colette. They're most likely in her clutch. The guardsman was just about to let us retrieve them, weren't you? Zephyr's eyes are locked onto Colette. There's a faint blush on his ears. Colette has her own gaze firmly on her shoes. Thanks, Zephyr. 
Huh? Jules and I maneuver around him before he snaps out of whatever train of thought that, it, that he had gotten lost in. Better for us. All right, now make this quick. I look around me. Where did I want to look? Oh no, I only have like one, probably one choice. Fallen pamphlet? No, I don't want that. Hair? Chair? Hair. There's a few hair follicles caught on the underside of Josephine's chair. I pick a few of them up and stash them. Hmm, where else can I look? Oh good, I can still look. The chair. The chair Lady Josephine had been sitting in. It's been overturned in all the commotion. There's a few red stains on the rug right to the side of the armrest. Yes, blood! I lean forward and touch the stain. It's wet but not sticky. I look at Jules, who pentamoms drinking a cup. Oh, I see. Adult grape juice. Fine. Why do they call it adult grape juice? Are they like 12? I make a mental note of what I found and kept looking around. There's a paper lined to the side of Josephine's chair. It seems to have been forgotten in the rush. I pick it up and see a few scribbles on one of the pages. The top portion of the front page of the pamphlet has been torn into little tabs. Oh, it was that Colette who was playing with it. Hmm, interesting. I pocket the pamphlet and keep looking. I look over the crime scene, but nothing else grabs my eyes. What do you think, detective? Hmm, interesting. I hope so, because it seems our time is up. Zephyr turns away from where he had been discussing with Colette to look at Jules. So, sir, if you've retrieved... Yes, I have them right here. I didn't even see him pick up the smelling salts, but sure enough he has a little satchel in his hands. Oh, look at that chubby kitty. Look at that, my chubby chubby kitty. Who's my chubby boy? <laughs> oh, he likes licking his chubby belly. It's like a small, smaller size of Winnie the Pooh. Or more like Tigger, Tigger 2. <laughs> Take this to my mother, Colette. I'll be along shortly. Uh, uh, y yes, sir. The maid curtsies and heads back to the dressing room from which she had appeared. Zephyr watches her go. And I will leave the scene in your capable hands, Gars. But no Claude? Yes, sir. Zephyr gives a salute while the men around the table enthusiastically find a border piece. Jules leads me back out to the banquet, once again squeezing by the crowd of onlookers. And what's the cutest thing is, is when a kitty cat is like licking himself and he's like, lick, lick, lick. You taste good? You taste yummy? You Are you yummy? Do you taste yummy? No? <laughs> He never kisses me. All he does is bite me. Ouch. Bite, bite, bite. <laughs> he just doesn't go after my fish, Toby. Toby is like, Toby ate my shrimp. My shrimp, but Sebastian? Oh, I miss him so much, Sebastian. He got so big, he was like the size of my thumb. He was like so small too, and I reared him and raised him, and he got so big, and then one day... Toby just massacred him. It's a beta fish, but I never thought Toby would eat Sebastian. But yeah, Toby the Toby the killer. Milo's a bit of a killer too, so <laughs> I have to keep him indoors. <sighs> okay, back to the story. So you've seen the crime scene interrogating me about the event. Surely there was something among all that you could work with. I have an idea. There's something I want to test, but I'll need ac access to Henry to do it. Access to the lion? Do you know where they're keeping him? Jules thinks for a moment, then shakes his head. Claude would know. I'm afraid not. I've been here attending my mother this whole time. Though I can't imagine there are many places they can house a lion. Did I hear you mention a lion, Blavor? Or maybe it's Godfrey, the creepy guy. <laughs> oh, he is the creepy guy. The creepy guy from before. Godfrey was his name. Slides into our conversation. Something about those eyes I don't trust. Jules. Frightful event. I saw it happen to my to your dear mother. And even her prize necklace is missing. My condolences. 
The older gentleman takes a long drink from the glass he has in his hand. Jewel stares at me but doesn't say anything. I hear talk that the guards threw the loin into a cage. One they would normally use to house prisoners. Quite fitting if you ask me. It's mean. Jules is like, Meh. I'm starting to like Jules now a bit more. Do you know where the ca this cage is? Oh, hello. It's good that we meet again. Amy, was it? Uh, yeah, it is. Now, where is this cage? Hmm. Let me think. It's getting awfully hard to remember things in my old age. It doesn't look that old. You said to come find you if I needed anything. I need to know where they're keeping Henry. Ugh, I like your spunk. I did say that, but I was more so referring to, to if you were in need of any financial help. Especially if someone were to be bothering you. Ugh, creepy. His eyes slide over to Jules, whose face is stone still. Well, I need to know where my lion is. I think one of the guards mentioned they had to place a cage outside due to its size. Interesting. Hmm, yeah. What else is interesting is I see you continue to seek out Monsieur Blavore's company. Are the two of you on good terms, Monsieur? She's quite the performer, isn't she? You say I'm a performer, but you didn't see my show. I sure am. Can I help you, Degons? Oh, he knows them. Why? Is it so wrong to simply offer my condolences? I wouldn't wish that happened to your mother or my enemy. How lucky you are, then, for this to happen to your enemy. Oh. Whoa, is the air cold in here or what? Why do you keep this man in your presence, Amy? Certainly, if you were looking for company, you could find someone who provides both the connections and the personality. No need to settle. What are you implying? You think I'm falling around for some favor? I cannot fathom any other reason. Can this guy just go away, please? He's swishing his goblet of adult grape juice. Ugh, call it wine, for crying out loud. In tight little circles. Jules continues to contribute nothing to the conversation. I understand Jules is a man of high society and whatnot, and thus would never resort to making a scene. But as for me, I time my aim and when it's in position. I nab the goblet from Godfrey's hand. He lets out a shout of surprise, while Jules looks at me confused. Thanks. I need this after talking to you. What? Would you take his adult, his glass of wine? Later. That doesn't make any sense. I grab Jules' arm and pulls both out of the front doors and out onto the lawn. What? What are you doing? Unhand me. He pulls out of my grip and gives me such an incredulous look. What? The conversation was essentially over. We got what we needed, so I decided to leave. Not how a girl from the 1800s acts. I even swirled the goblet of adult gr wine in his face. Why did you take that anyway? Yeah, why? You'll see. Now we need to find a lion. Oh, she wants to use it. I look around us, but don't see any obvious iron cages. It's not helping that the sun is starting to set. Gah, I was putting together my plans, collecting evidence, and the sun has the audacity to set. Ugh. I clench my jaw and get to thinking, I need to hurry up. I was running out of time, and what would happen if that happened? I bit my thumb. This is stupid. All of this is stupid, and if I can't figure it out by the time that sun sets again, are they going to cart my dad and Henry away forever? Why are we simply standing here? Let's look. Huh? Jules is looking at me, his face a question. I shake my head. Ugh. What was I doing getting caught up in a failure? It wasn't like me to freak myself out looking down when you're high up in the air. Awesome acrobat Amy would never do that. Um, awesome is not even a term of the 1800s. Yeah, let's do that. We start by traipsing around the event booths, but don't see anything out of place. 
The next plan of action would be to search the field of wagons that housed all the fair, very fair performers. It was a bit of a walk, but it was a wide open space. If someone needed a spot to put a giant iron cage, you couldn't pick a better spot. We make the walk. Taking about five minutes to get there, I see a few other families packing up and starting to head in for the night. No giant iron cages from what I can see. Hmm. I stop a woman and ask if she's seen any sight of Herr Henry or any iron cages for that matter. I'm sorry, no, it's been quite here all quiet here all day. Did something happen? Just a minor incident. Please let us know if you hear anything. Uh yes, my lord. Uh, now he's a lord. <laughs> the woman looks once and then twice at jewels and then scurries off. She ducks inside what must be her family's wagon. Up ahead is a starry troop's wagon, all the lanterns out. Normally Dad would be out front practicing one of his routines or just wiping down the exterior of the wagon, but it's all silent. Is this what I would be, be coming home to every day if I couldn't solve the case? Oh, Amy, come on. Let's go. You're done? Yeah, it's empty. Very well. We turn back and start walking back towards the event booth. No leads. Why don't you ask your mother, like, where your father is and where the lion is? She would know. Or even Claude? Hmm. I had pieces of puzzle I wanted to test, but no line to test them on. If we could just find out where they had taken Henry. Go ask Claude, Amy. Back there, that wagon belonged to your family, did it not? Hmm. Yeah, it did. How could you tell? Just the way you looked at it. Looked at it. You got a wistful look on your face when we approached it. It was clear it meant something to you. You seem close with your family. Huh? Yeah, I guess I am. Isn't that normal? Oh, come on, Amy. Grow up. I mean, if your mother was arrested under false claims, wouldn't you do everything you could to save her? Hmm. Not everyone has, like, a happy childhood. Really? Well, I'm not sure if the comparison is accurate, that's all. If my mother was arrested, in most cases there wouldn't be anything for me to do. She's the one who pulls all the strings, after all. Anything that involves the Blavors, their fame, their money, their renown, it's just, it's really just hers. Oh, she would just save herself then. Yes, in most things my role is to stand back and stay out of the way. Oh. His face seems impassive, but I can tell there's a lot more to this. She seems like a pretty impressive figure. My dad is kind of like that too, like he can hold the whole world on his shoulders. Uh, that's not really a comparison, Amy. Eh, maybe that's not the right thing to say. No. We lapse into an uncomfortable silence. There's still a bit to go till we make it back to the event booths. Think, Amy, think. Change the subject. Change the subject. So, um, you knew that Godfrey guy? You want to talk about dig games? Okay, so not the right topic. Sorry, I just didn't know the two of you knew each other if there's an issue. He's the head of the dig games household, of course. We know each other. My face must show my lack of recognition because Jules gives me a A-OK, -okay, quite funny looking, astonished face. The De Games, the fashion empire? Fashion? Oh, are they also a fashion company? Uh, are they a fashion company? They're our biggest rivals. Huh? He shakes his head. In retrospect, I'm quite honored that you recognize my family at all. He looks at my outfit again. Excuse me, this outfit is cute, and you know it. Hmm, perhaps. Huh, <laughs> see, I'm right. I'm always right, you know. A good trait for a detective to have. The silence between us is comfortable this time as we make our trek back to the event booths. This gate matches mine, and we walking like this is a comfortable companionship. We stop in the middle of the plaza in front of the booths. The sun continues to set, but still no leads. Well, now that we've ruled out the wagons in the event booths, where else is there to look? 
I stare at the guardhouse, trying to remember if I've seen any other open air segments that might possibly count as being outside. I can't remember any, but I wasn't there for very long. You know, locking up someone in the guardhouse would seem like the obvious answer. But didn't Godfrey say that it was a cage they had used before, like a permanent structure? And how did Godfrey even know about this when everyone we've asked has been none the wiser? Let's look at the guardhouse. Inside or out is the logical next step. We head over and knock on the door and no one answers. They must all be out stationed due to the event. Do you think they've solved that jigsaw puzzle of theirs? Who knows? I knock again for old time's sake. Still no answer. I'm going to find a window to break into. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I won't let you besmirch the Bavaria family name by... I head around the side of the building, passing the bush I had found Lulu in before. As I leave Jules behind and pass by the old tree up front, I hear it. It's faint, but I can recognize it anywhere. It's a little meow and a sad one at that. I hurry, following the meowing, which leads me further back all the way on the other side of the guardhouse. Following a brick wall, I come upon a little clearing hidden by the casing walls. And there he is, Henry. Oh, Henry, baby, kitty, looked up in an, locked up in an old iron cage. He's the star of the show. Meow. Uh, tigers, or lions don't meow. He looks tired and sad, but otherwise no worse for wear. I run up to him and he starts, and he starts rubbing on the iron bars, trying to rub my hands. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? You are, I know you are, and that you couldn't possibly have attacked someone. Oh look, he's happy. I give him a few scratches until he calms down. Looking at me, I can tell he's looking for his next command. I turn around to motion Jules over. He's standing a few feet away with his nose completely covered with his handkerchief. Now, for the, my experiment, watch carefully, Jules. I'm going to introduce these ingredients, see if I can provoke him into repeating the attack. Sniff, all right. Oh no, it looks awful again. <laughs> now, what should I show Henry first? Um, the pamphlet. Henry, can you read? I wave the pamphlet in front of his face. Are you taking this seriously? Let me have my fun. The glass of out grape juice. I pour some of the juice from the goblet onto the floor of the cage. Henry sniffs it and looks back at me. Hmm, nothing. Assistant, will you approach? He rolls his eyes but then steps closer. His handkerchief is still plastered over half of his face. Hold this goblet. I hand him the goblet and motion for him to get closer to the cage. He's giving me the stink eye. Okay, just like that. Jules is staring at me like I'm mad and Henry sits patiently. Hmm, nothing. Next. Try petting him. Excuse me, at you. Maybe your mom moved to pet him and that spooked him in combination with the goblet. He begrudgingly puts his handkerchief away and reaches in to pet Henry. Henry shies away. The sudden movement spooks Jules, who then promptly drops the goblet. With a dramatic crash, it shatters all over the cage floor. Well, now the cage looks like a crime scene. I lean down and grab the only thing I have to wipe it up, the pamphlet. I'm able to get most of it up when... Ow! I cut one of my fingers on a glass shard. Careful. He reaches down and pulls my hand out. You hurt yourself. Oh. Is this like the romance? Like, I have had no... Like, if I had gone somewhere else, like, would it had turned into, like, Godfrey's romance? And if I had gone the other route, would it have turned to Claude's romance? Because clearly, I would rather pursue Claude than Jules. <laughs> Claude was, like, like, I would have rather gone after the man with the chick that looks like a little dumpling than this guy. But I guess I'm screwed now. There's no more of the other interactions with the other guy, the characters. So it's kind of like one of those one track romances, which is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of sad because you can't like branch off and pursue someone else, which most romance visual novels have, like where you can actually 
if there's other romance you can you can if you don't like the character the personality of the one you're you're hanging out with you can branch into another one and this is kind of limiting so yeah kind of sad about that but i guess i have to finish what i started right <laughs> you hurt yourself and some people might really like jewels i don't know i like this background though it's pretty with the, the lion and everything it's not that bad. You shouldn't be so flippant over things like this. You won't be able to perform if your hands are hurt. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. He pats my fingers a bit, then let's go. Let me clean this up. I'm more worried about the lion stepping on glass than your fingers. Before I can say anything, he's already leaned down and is wiping up the rest of the spilled juice. I stand and watch him. He didn't need to do that. He's even getting his sleeve dirty. It was nice of him. In the Star Age shoot, we do so many things that put our lives on the line, all for the sake of our audience to make them happy. To have someone show concern over me, over my well-being, it was nice. I didn't know it could feel this nice to have someone to look after you. What? Your parents look after you. Jewel stands up. His work is done. Thanks. No problem. He looks to the left and right with the wadded up dirt dirty pamphlet in his hands. Hmm, now where do we put this? Just throw it under the cage. What, now we litter? That would be littering. Yeah, Jules. Yeah, Amy. I shrug. What? You don't care about littering? Ugh, very well. He reluctantly tosses under the cage. I don't like Amy. What's next? Um, why would she, like, not care about littering? That just kind of turned me off for the main character now. I'm like completely like, she's no friend of mine now. I pull out the hair follicle I had in my pocket, waving in front of Henry's face. Henry starts to purr, but that's about it. So for the character, for the de developer to write that they don't care that their main character litters, that just really put, put this whole game off for me now. I don't know. I'm sorry, folks. Like, why would, like, the other character... Jules, who's like a rich kid, he cares about littering, and yet the little urchin who's like, who was spoiled and raised by her wonderful parents, doesn't care if they litter the fairgrounds of their home. Ugh. <laughs> oh god, goodness people, now I don't even feel like ending this game, or finishing this game now that that was put in there. I feel really... I'm very passionate about, about keeping, you know, the environment clean and uh, protecting nature and that just really put me off. Like, I don't even want to support this game now because of that. <sighs> what should I do? I don't know. Should I finish this, folks? Should I finish this game who has a main character who doesn't care about the environment? Doesn't care about, like, dirting up her home? And yet, her companion cares more about it than she does. And yet cares more about, like, poor Henry's cage with glass in there. And... <sighs> Continue on. Henry starts to purr, but that's about it. That's you. Bless you. I'm finished. Well, that accomplished nothing. That was all I had planned. We both look at Henry, who is looking at us attentively. When I tried to pet him, he shed away. Yeah, that's what he's been trained to do. He doesn't lunge after people. I look at Jules, who has pulled out his handkerchief to reapply to his face. And from where he's holding the handkerchief, I can see his whole sleeve is stained. I'm sorry about that. I at least your cufflinks match now. You mentioned that before. What did you mean? Ah, uh, that your cufflinks don't match? Right. I just thought it was from some new fashion thing. One red, the other green. My, my cufflink is red? Is this a trick question? Wait, wait, you really didn't know? Oh, he's colorblind. Maybe that's why his outfit's so garish. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe that's why his mom won't let him do anything in the fashion. Because he can't even see what the fashion looks like. 
How do you not know what you're wearing, especially since you Belvoras are all fashion people? I would prefer it if you would keep this to yourself. What, that you accidentally dressed yourself in clashing colors? Maybe it can be a part of that spring collection you were telling me about earlier. He doesn't take the bait, and I can tell from his face that this shocked him more than I really that I really think it ought to. Hey, it's okay. Sometimes I put my pants on backwards. It happens to the best of us. Really not are the brightest crayon in the box, are you, Amy? I've been trying to hide it. I keep the greens and reds separate from each other, but Paulette must have mixed them. Greens and reds? I mean, that's no real problem. Just separate them next time. Ugh, don't understand. Uh, right? Why is Jules acting so weird about this? It kind of reminds me of that thing I heard one time. Oh. Hey, are you... Don't tell anyone. Why? Lots of people are colorblind. If my mother knew I'm the heir to a fashion empire, I can't be colorblind. She would, she... Peters off, but doesn't say anything else. He peters off. He patters off, I guess, that's what they're trying to say. I've never met Josephine Blafour, but she sounds like a handful, just the way Jules is referring to her. Maybe Josephine really did attack Henry. What? You're making her out to be a monster. She pulls all the strings. You're, you're reacting like she's going to disown you for not being able to tell red green from red. Is that really that hard to imagine? She built the family from nothing by her, but her own hands. She won't hand it over to anyone she doesn't deem worthy. I think about my own parents, who were kind and patient with me through all the years. Even when I'm constantly slacking on my chores, they never hold that against me. So yes, it really is hard for me to imagine. Not that I don't believe him, but it just made me sad to think that Jules never had a mom who would be patient with him. I'm sorry. He lets out a sigh and looks off to the distance where the sun is setting. Well, regardless, I would appreciate if you kept that information to yourself. My lips are sealed. It's quiet and the crickets have come out for the night. It's that time of night that everything is winding down. But all I can think about is Dad, Henry, and Jules. Jules? Why are you thinking about Jules? He walks me back to the banquet. You haven't found out anything. The police inform him that they, they will be done with their investigation by tomorrow. His mother still hasn't awoken. There are no new developments. Why not look for the necklace? I see. Thank you. The guard salutes and walks off, leaving the two of us. Tomorrow. Dad, Henry. We'll need to find something by then. Think we could tell the police that Henry sh shed away from you? He shakes his head. That doesn't disprove what happened before. Yes, he's a gentle creature. See, I told you. But accidents could still happen, and... Yeah, yeah, I know. I just... I don't know how to get them to believe me. Why don't you go home for the night? I'll continue looking into things. Very kind of you, Jules. I'll see if I can leverage some of my mother's influence to turn the tide in our favor. Come find me tomorrow morning. You'd do that? Like I said, I want this affair to be resolved. And, well, I think it would be a shame if Henry was taken away from his family. I'm, like, and my dad? Oh, why is this affecting me like this? Thank you. It's nice feeling like there was someone else out there on my side. Thank you, Jules. I make the trek back to the wagons, thinking of him. A son who was hiding himself away from his mother to avoid her disappointment. I tried to imagine how that would feel, feel to live like that. Dad and Mom never chewed me out for the few mistakes I would do in my routines. They would always check up on me and make sure I was okay. But if they hadn't reacted so kindly... Jules had looked so bored when he was sitting next to his mother during my performance. I guess that's how he looks most of the time. And again, that feeling that I just wanted to make him smile or laugh. I wanted to see what emotion his face would show next. 
So what if you can't tell green from red? There's more to life than just two colors. The wagons were ahead in this time. The lantern was, was lit outside the starry troop. Someone was home. I rush up and stop short. My mother is sitting on the wagon steps, her face full of sorrow. Mom! Oh, Amy, there you are. She smiles at me, but the pain is still there. I was wondering where you were. It's getting late. Quietly, as if she almost didn't want to ask. Did you? No, I'm useless. I'm absolutely useless as a detective. I'm no Nancy Drew, Mom. Sorry. I found Henry and proved to Jules that he's not an aggressive animal. Now, what's that going to do? Nothing. Sorry, just taking a sip of tea. Jules? Jules Bavar. He, um, he sneezed on me and we eventually got to talking. It's a long story. The Blavar? Yes. Why? I knew I could count on you, Amy. Gain the goodwill of the Blavar family. Well, just because he likes Henry won't change the opinions of the police. They're still continuing on in their investigation. I see. But Jules did say he was going to work through the night to see if there were any other strings he could pull for me. My, the two of you seem quite close, having only known each other for a day. <laughs> well, you know, teaming up in the face of danger and all that, quick way to become friends. And a powerful friend indeed. Were you able to find Dad? She smiles but looks down. I did, he's being held by the police. They won't let him go until they finish their investigation. Finish their investigation. Tomorrow a frown creeps onto my face. I sigh. Normally I work well under pressure, but this is just asking for too much. Go get some sleep, you'll need it. What about you? I'll be there in a moment. I just wanted to think. I look at my mom and think back to what Jules had told me about Josephine Blavor. I don't think I could do it. Thanks, Mom. And I bid her good night. Or what was meant to be a good night. After I tucked into bed, sleep eluded me. My mother came in a short while later and laid down, but even still I was wide awake. Jules had told me to go home, so I did, but I can't just sit here doing nothing while he's out there working the case. Dad and Henry were on the line, after all. I creep out of the wagon, silently, so as not to wake my mom and sn snuck out the door. The cold night greets me, and I take a deep breath. Are you still wearing your outfit? Ugh, dirty. Let's see what I can get up to. I canvas the ground, same as usual. I go to visit Henry, who has been dozing and wakes at my approach. After a few scratches and a number of who's a good boy, I leave him to try my luck at the event booth. Everyone had gone home. Clearly it was an awful hour to be honest and left their stations mostly cleared. A few of the booths have a number of papers still scattered about, but glancing them doesn't eliminate any good leads. Or juicy gossip, for that matter. Ah. I try the front door to the manor, as expected it's locked. I eye the guardhouse in the distance. I could try knocking, but I was sure a guard would answer, and then what? There wasn't an emergency, besides my father and beloved lion possibly being taken away. It's then the exhaustion hits me. Every bone in my body feels like a stone in my feet pound. I've been running on overtime since the performance, and now it seems as if my body was telling me enough. I plop down right there in front of the manor on the stone steps. I just sit and I stare and I think. Think about all the ways this could possibly go wrong. All the ways that Mum and I might have to find are living in the future. It's like I'm high above the audience, balancing on the tra trapeze bar, and I... I look down and I see how far I, I can fall. I put my head between my knees and just will my strength to come back. Come on, Amy, you're the amazing acrobat, Amy. What are you doing looking down? I know this will pass, so I let it. As I'm sitting there willing my strength to return, I start to hear voices. Just one more day, we're almost free. I know, it's just so hard, but all I want is to be with you. The voices are coming from the direction of the guardhouse. Was someone outside? I get up and sneak over, and indeed the voices get stronger. Someone was around the corner discussing something. Up in the bush I had found Lulu in. 
I found Lulu in and started to eavesdrop. The gentleman said he would deliver the rest of the payment tomorrow. That's good. I don't think we can sell it just yet. Not until we get into men. Oh, it's probably Colette. Maybe Zephyr. Then, that was the neighboring country to our north. They were planning on fleeing the country. Once he gives us the rest, we can leave. We can finally be together. Oh, remember Zephyr was looking at Colette? He wasn't like, and she was looking down, blushing. Interesting. And he was like, the guardsman was behind Josephine. Hmm. And maybe it's Godfrey who's buying the, the necklace, huh? Oh, I was right. I love you, Colette. Colette the maid? There are a few more mumble words that I can't make out in a silence. After a moment, the mousy maid walks by the bush of hiding and seemingly returning to the manor. I slip out of the bush and start to tail her. She climbs the stairs in front of the manor and is about to unlock the front door when I speak up. Sure is cold outside tonight. The maid whips around with wide eyes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, it's you, Lord Jewel's friend. The one and only amazing acrobat Amy. Y yes, that's right. C can, I, can I help you? It's awfully late. Ever since I surprised her, she hasn't stopped wringing her hands. You're telling me. I was just taking a little midnight stroll because I couldn't sleep. My father being arrested and all. Her hands pick up speed for a moment there, then go back to the usual pace. My condolences, Lady Amy. Oh, I'm not a lady. Just Amy is fine. The maid looks away for a moment and then back to me. So, we've established I'm awake because I couldn't sleep. What about, what about you? Stressed about the incident with Lady Josephine, or... Perhaps you were meeting up with someone. Her eyes get wider and she starts to turn around. I grab her arm and force her to face me. Apologies. I couldn't help but overhear a certain conversation. It must be nice to have someone who loves you that much. Don't say anything. I beg of you. Oh... Please, please don't. You said yourself you're not a lady, so you must know we could never be together normally. This is our only way, our only chance. Could never be together? What does that mean? Why keep it a secret at all? It's simply not done, him and I. Lady Josephine would never allow it. It would besmirch the Blavar name. Wow, does this Josephine sound like a handful? Who cares who you're dating? It's none of her business. None of her business? But it is, you see. Anything that's related to the Blavars is her domain, her image to maintain. And for her personal maid to be caught with, uh, with someone of the station, it would reflect poorly on her. She would never allow it. Hmm, really? Think of it this way. You and Laura Jules. You would never marry a woman of such a low station, you must understand. He would bring nothing to his family, and you would be mercilessly mocked by those who'd want to see the family fall. Hey, now, he's not, he's not courting me or anything. We're just trying to solve a case. Jules courting me? Haha. <laughs> well, no, that's an image I can't get out of my head. I'm standing there trying not to blush like a little girl when Colotte sees an opportunity and flings the a door open and slips inside. Hey, come back. Oh my god, Amy, you just lost. They were talking about the du the Oh, the necklace. You can't let her get away. The door slams in my face. If it was her plan to distract me, well, it worked. Why did that fluster me so much? You, this so much of an airhead, Amy? I turned away from the manor, my legs unconsciously taking me back to our wagon. As I walk, my mind wanders and mulls over what she had said. She can't be with who she loves because of station. Who cares about what this... Aren't you going to think about like what they were talking about? The necklace? And because they have the money and now they can leave and they're going to leave the country? <sighs> no wonder you... you like... <laughs> I know words. No words. Because it would besmirch her lady's name. It's a weird thought that your actions could be so impact those associated with you. I think about Jules and his relationship with his mother, how he's hiding his color blindness, how he could 
how he could see a personal trait being perceived as a flaw to be exposed by his mother's enemies. Maybe the other romance path is better, like with the one with Claude. I don't know. It makes me sad. It makes me sad for him and for Colette. Why would you be sad for them? They're talking about the, the, the necklace that they're going to run away out of the country. Is she that simple? On the outside, it seems nice. I'm so frustrated right now, folks. Can you tell I'm frustrated? Like, just the writing of this? Like, they've turned this, this, the protagonist into a simple airhead. On the outside, it seems nice to have the prestige and all the fancy clothes and going to parties that the Boulevards had access to. But for me, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't keep my mouth shut long enough. If I marry Jules, oh my goodness, why are you even thinking like that? She's so stupid. I would be miserable. Of that, I was sure. Who cares about Jules? You, I care about your father and Henry. You've solved nothing, because you're stupid. The sun has risen. My eyes are tired and Jules is standing self-assuredly out in front of the manor's doors. The rings around his eyes match mine. I can't help but to smile. He smiles back at me. Oh, goodness, two fools in love. <laughs> Good morning! The same to you, Amy. Yeah, you deserve each other. You're both so stupid. I see you didn't take my advice and rest last night. Well, he's a little bit smarter than her. I certainly... Well, he could have had the maid dress him, you know? Like... Outfit. Ugh. I certainly took the advice. Can't say I was that successful in executing it, though. You have... Ah! ah. <laughs> I'm about to choke on my tea. You, you were right there. You listened to the whole thing. The conversation of them talking about the necklace and running away and selling it. <sighs> silly, silly girl. He laughs. <laughs> Even though he looks a bit deceivable, his hair all up in odd angles, and his aforementioned eyes, he seems lighter. He's certainly smiling more. Did you manage to pull those strings? My puppet, puppet. <laughs> I could call him a puppet. He looks like a puppet in that, that outfit. The smile falters slightly. My mother is awake. Ah, he nods. I had an idea after yes yesterday you mentioned allergies. I mean, you were the one sneezing all over the place. Ahem, right. But in regards to Henry, my mother tends to wear very heavy perfume. Perhaps something she was wearing was what triggered Henry's reaction. Oh, that's a good point. So we just need to figure out what type of perfume. You have all the evidence you need in that conversation. <sighs> dear, 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 dear. So let me introduce you to my mother. A bit of a grimace there. Well, sure, why not? Anything for the case. So silly, girl. Lady Josephine seems like an angry woman. Up close, the lines and creases around her eyes look deep, and her frown with a jaw that could cut glass. Her eyes, though, is clear where Jules got his from, even though she seems so angry. I can recognize traces of him in her. What? What do you want? Are you here to replace Colette? Where is she? I sent her for a glass of sparkling juice. Juice? Why is everyone drinking juice? <sighs> sparkling wine. Minutes ago. And she still hasn't returned. Mother, this is... Another one of those guards? Go away! You lot are giving me a headache. I already told you, I don't want to talk. Gee, she won't even let her son talk. No, this is Amy. Get me another glass of one of those wines they have out there. I have a headache and need something to kill the pain. She's pointing right at me. Was she ordering me to grab her a drink? Excuse me? Mother, this is Amy. We are working together to investigate what happened last evening. What is there to investigate? Why are, you, why are the lot of you... She points at me at this. Taking so long to do your job. I was attacked by that lion. My necklace was stolen. Throw the man into jail and kill the beast. Simple as that. Simple as that? I think not. Where did Henry Err uh, the lion bite you? What? I looked her over this morning and couldn't find any traces of a bite. Jules, you be quiet. None? No. He attacked 
to me and I passed out. I'm lucky to even be alive. And you're saying just because he didn't bite me that is nothing? He lunged at you, correct, when you handed him the ball. Yes, how many times do I have to keep explaining this to you all? But he didn't bite you. Did he shove you, touch you? He lunged at me and I passed out. What more is there to say? This is an affront to my senses and my family's reputation. To believe that this could happen to a lady and, and no one even puts the creature down. Despicable, the lot of you. I'm grinding my teeth, but power through. There's only one more thing I need to know. What perfume were you wearing last evening? Let's just get the information we need and get out. What? What does this have to do with the case? Just answer the question, Mother. Even Jewel seems to be annoyed. Hmm. Well, it was part of our new line. Elderberry mist, if you must know. Now, that glass of wine. I turn away and stalk into the Jordan powder room. Jules follows me. His mother's yelling something after him, but I'm not putting in the effort to deduce what. I look at the mirror in front of me and count to three in my head. I'm seething with rage. How could anyone put up with her? I'm sorry. She can be a lot to handle, I'm aware. You know, I'm getting an idea of just what why she might have enemies that would want to see her family fall. Jules grimaces, but notably doesn't do or say anything. And I probably would if my dad and Henry's lives weren't on the line. I turn back to the mirror and see my reflection. Right, focus on the mission at hand, Amy. Elderberry Mist, where is it? Jules motions to the bag sitting under one of the counters, which I grab and dump out its contents. There's a ton of stuff in there, but I get to work checking each of the labels one by one. Hmm, not it. Not this one either. It's a lot of products to check. Can I help you? We both look up. It's Colette hovering in the doorway. Ah, Colette, I was wondering where you had gotten off to. Come help us. We're looking for my mother's elderberry mist. Colette makes eye contact with me. She doesn't say anything, but the serious look in her face says everything. Don't say anything. It's the new fragrance my mother is about to put on the market. Jules is still looking through the pile of cosmetics, increasingly worried expression on his face. I know we brought it with us. Where is it? What's in it? Well, let's silently move us up to help us. She starts looking through the pile with Jules. Rose water, elderberry oil, and a base of ethanol. I see. I look at Colette, who has picked up the last vial. It says orange marmalade pomade. Maybe that's Jules. I don't see it here, Lord Jules. Hmm, where could it have gone? Did any of the guards search through our things? No, why would they? No reason. I throw Jules a glance. You can tell I'm trying to tell him something, but he's not understanding what. Would it be in Josephine's bag, like her smelling salts? Ah, I actually pulled that out of my pocket. My mother doesn't carry any of her cosmetics on her. Normally, Colette holds them for her. The maid has started to wring her hands together. She probably just shouldn't play poker. <sighs> Amy, you're not getting this, like... She's nervous. <sighs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. Colette, where is your bag? Maybe it's still in there. She doesn't move. Colette? My apologies, Lord Jules. I am trying to remember where I left it. What does it look like? It's a white bag with elaborate gold trimmings. Colette still just stares at a reflection in the mirror. I move to the vanity and move the bags aside. There in the back. Is this it? I pull it out and shake it a few times. There's a fair bit in here. Ah, that's it. Strange. Why was it all the way back there? Colette holds out her hand for the bag. I open it and spill everything out on the counter. Out comes paper, pencils, a compact, and there, a glass bottle of some sort of liquid. I pick it up in big letters. It reads, Lady Bavar's Elderberry Mist. There it is. Jules takes it from me and slides it in his pocket. I'm standing there watching Colette in the mirror. She's as straight as a pin, her hands folded in front of her and her eyes downcast. She's wringing her hands. I'm glad we were able to find it. Thank you, Colette. My pleasure, Lord Jules. Her face is as white as a sheet. I don't know why you're not picking up any of this. 
from the other room, Josephine is yelling, Colette, Colette, I want another glass of sparkling wine, Colette. Excuse me. The maid bows and scurries out the door. The silence in her wake is deafening. Now that we have this, shall we go to test it on Henry? I turn back to the scattered items on the countertops. The items from Colette's bag. Last night I ran into your maid. Oh? It was the middle of the night and she was talking with someone near the guardhouse about running away together. Did she know she was going to quit? No. I pick up one of the pencils in front of me. There are little tooth marks along the length, like someone had been absentmindedly chewing it. Does your mother know? Not that I'm aware of. Colette has been with us for a very long time. I wasn't aware that there was any anywhere else for her to go. The person told her that he loved her. The paper right in front of me has perpendicular tears running along the edge, or tears running along like a nervous habit. I ran into Colette later and confronted her about it. She asked me not to tell anyone. Why don't you bring up the part about like selling, you know, and the man's money and as soon as we sell it, we can run out of the country. Ooh, <laughs> they're talking about the necklace. <gasps> Thus, why are you telling me? I'm telling you because I don't know. She said that Josephine would never allow the two of them to be together. Jules looks down. At the time, I thought that was stupid. Like, who cares what who your maid dates? But then I thought about it, about how you're hiding your colorblindness. That is a secret I strongly suggest you keep to yourself. Okay, okay, got it. But I just think it's sad because she's this way. You won't ever know the real you or the real Colette. Do you really want to know the real Colette? She's a thief. That's true, she won't. But I think it also extends past her. Even if my mother did approve, it's a weakness to be exploited by her revels, gossip for the masses. That more than anything else is what she's trying to avoid. But I just think that's stupid. There should be some space for Colette to love who she loves and for you to be yourself. It's easy for you to say, Amy, like you have freedom, he doesn't. I appreciate it, Amy. There might not be anything we can change about the situation, but it's nice to know that you care. Yeah, but not much good that does. He smiles at me, a sad smile. I'll keep in mind what you told me, now shall we? He pulls the bottle of perfume out of his pocket and nods to the door. Right, Henry. Let's go. As we come upon the cage, I immediately notice two things. One, there was a guard in front of it, busy fiddling with the lock. Two, the cage was completely empty, no Henry. No, where did he go? The guard turns around and looks at me with a confused expression. There's a little baby chick on his shoulder, Claude and Lulu, wasn't it? Oh, Claude. The man that I wanted to romance. <laughs> Never got the chance. Hmm? Or maybe this story is longer than I thought. Maybe you can, like, branch out maybe here. I don't know. Henry, the lion! There was a giant lion being housed here. I grab the iron bars and try to peer further in, as if maybe he was still in there, hiding in the back. Gone. Lion and man going to city for booking. They're arresting a lion? The guard nods, but has no emotion. Being transferred to city. There they arrest. Is he from a different country? He at least they're not killing him today, but I still can't let them take him away. Traveling all the way to the nearest city to rescue him, it was now or never. But our last shot at proving that just what was happened was just escorted away. The guard nods at me and at Jules and calmly walks back around the corner and out of sight. No, I guess not. I stare into the back of the cage, thinking long and hard. Sorry, Amy. Maybe they haven't left yet. Or we can catch up with them on the road and explain. Nothing. There's nothing I can think of. I lift my head back and slam it. I lift my head back and slam it hard on the iron bar. Hey, stop that! Think, think. I gotta think of something, or else they're gonna kill Henry. They're gonna kill my dad. Jules grabs my shoulders and yanks me away from the cage, pressing me against his chest. 
Think of something, I swear. I feel like that's all we have been saying this past day. Maybe it's hopeless. We've been running around this whole time trying to figure out what happened. Yeah, you've been running around like two, like, <laughs> knuckleheads, and yet you just heard the whole story from the maid and the other guardsmen, and that they're good, they sold, they're going to sell the necklace and run away out of the country. You have all the evidence you need. But what if Henry really didn't randomly attack Josephine? But she wasn't bit. But he still lunged at her. Is that a crime? If Josephine says it is. His hug tightens and he presses his face in the side of my hair. But I don't. It's not. It's hugging me and all I can think about is this, about how the world seems to be spinning around me. I rub my eyes to dab at the tears, staring blindly down, down at the grass under the iron cage. The little wadded up pamphlet Jules had littered there the other day. Yes, did you guys ever read the pamphlet, what, what Colette had? Probably like she wrote on it, like you didn't even read it. <sighs> frustrated, frustrated, so frustrated. The pamphlet had little tears all along the side with neat orderly spacing, just like the papers in Colette's bag. The pamphlet belongs to Colette. The pamphlet that that has some strange indentations on one of the pages. I lean away from Jules' embrace and bent out to pick up the pamphlet. It had dried, the sparkling juice leaving bright red stains through the paper. I fold it open and my heart stops. There, where the juice had stained the paper had stained where the indentations had been. The paper was red and there, clear as day, were words in a blue-green color. Oh, it came out because of the red. Ah, it was invisible ink. When lion is close to her, spray. My hands shake. My vision falters. Are you all right? Jules, look! I show him the paper, but he just shakes his head. What is it? It's a stained pamphlet. Oh, yeah, he's colorblind. Don't you see the words? What words? I look again. Wait, it was green and red, of course. It says... When lion is close to her spray, this pamphlet belonged to Colette and has the same paper chairs that her notes did. The letters were hidden, but I guess the juice made them appear just now. Which means invisible ink and Colette has sprayed the perfume onto Henry by someone else's order. We need to find Colette. She's the one who made Henry attack. Jules looks at me and nods. We take off back to the manor. Time is ticking. It's going to be too late. Colette run away already? We run back to Josephine, but I haven't seen her at all. Where is she? My glass is empty. We run back to the banquet hall, but a maid? Who? No, I haven't seen her. Did something happen? Why are we asking him? Look, we need to find her and quick. Any help would be appreciated. I'll let you know if I come across her in my travels. Go to the guardhouse. The guardhouse. We run back out to the courtyard. There, in large black wagons, are the police, and in the middle of the procession, a large iron cage with two occupants, a sad-looking Henry and a bedrickle-looking dad. Mum is at the foot of the cage, looking up at the two of them, while a guard is pushing her back. Please, just let me talk to my husband. Back, ma'am. You'll have a chance at the station. But my husband... Unhand her. L -l Lord Jules, I'm sorry, but he's going to be sentenced for the attack on your mother. But not the woman. Let her go. The guard steps back but refuses to let my mom get any closer. Dad is looking at the two of us smiling, always professional and always remembering his performer's ironclad rule. Make the audience happy. The two are wasting valuable time just standing there. Mom looks to me, her hair all deceived. Amy, they're taking him away. I know, but we found out who possibly could have done it. What? Have you seen a woman, Colette, the Blavar family maid? We found evidence that she's involved with the attack. No, I haven't. Go to, oh. Go to the guards where you found her. Keep an eye out for her. Amy, we need to keep looking. Oh, you too. Right. Aren't you? I'll explain later. I grab Jules' hand and keep running, dodging the black wagons and horses that make up the police hunter jar. We stop at the event booth and ask the woman there if she had seen Colette. No. She was too busy dealing with the logistics of everyone leaving the manor at the same time. Next check are the wagons. 
Near most of the families are packing up, too engrossed in their own work to notice one mousy maid slipping amongst themselves. Where could she be? Let's try the guardhouse next. Oh, the only um, intelligent answer here. Right, that's where she had been talking to someone last night. That's where you first should have gone. So we run there. I knock loudly on the guardhouse front door. A few moments later, the emotional scar from earlier answers. You! Have you seen Colette, the Bovarm family maid? Hmm. No. How about something unusual? Lady attacked by lion. We know! Gah! Hmm. Zephyr patrolled last evening. Heard some noises. And where is guard Zephyr? Claude looks behind him at the comically large chalkboard hanging on one of the walls. He slowly reads off of it. Guarding backstage. Let's go! I all but slam the door shut behind me. Jewels right on my tail. We make a beeline to the manor and with it the backstage of the arena. You should take a weapon with you. We rush in to be greeted by silence. Where is he? Why is no one here? Ahem, guard Zephyr, this is Lord Jules Bavar, requesting your service. His voice echoes all around us. A surprised yelp is our reply, and a few rustling seconds later, a bed wriggles. Zephyr squeezes up from behind a couple boxes. But Lord, Lord Jules, what a surprise for you to be here. Uh, how, how can I help you? Of course you're, like, guilty. The man is sweating buckets. What in the world? Amy, are you that stupid? Your comrade, Claw, said that you had patrolled last night. You heard some strange noises. Tell me about that. Oh, what? Did he? Oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. That was nothing. Nothing to it. Nothing? Nope, ha, ha, ha. Go check behind the boxes, Amy. You'll find what you're looking for. The poor guy's probably going to be dehydrated by all that sweating. <sighs> These two knuckleheads... I glance at Jules, who was looking back at me. Yeah, this didn't check out. Colette had been talking to someone last night. Someone who didn't reappear, reappear after she had left. Maybe they had gone back inside. Back inside the guardhouse. Ugh, oh, finally putting it together. It's this, this, like, the idiocy of these two are, like, making my brain hurt. I watch too much, uh, <laughs> Murder, She Wrote, and, you know... <laughs> Too many murder, Perot, and, you know, Agatha Christie. Like, I know these things. Know these things before these two do. Who else was on patrol last night? Uh huh? Oh, um, um, uh, I don't know. Ha ha ha. Zephyr eyes glanced behind him for a second, then back to us. Okay, Amy, go behind the box. Um, is that all? It's not. Jules nods at me, and for the first time, I know immediately what he's trying to say. He steps in front of me, getting close to the guard. I step further behind him, out of sight of Zephyr, so he can't see when I sneak off. Tell me what you know about the attack on my mother. I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Really? Last evening when she... Now's my chance. I dip around the corner around a few of the boxes. My cord lazé is attached to the scaffolding here. I grab the rope and start shimming up as fast and silently as I can. Within moments, I'm at the top. Then among the ceiling beams and ironwork. I see Jules down below with Zephyr, but, but he's asking him more and more absurd questions, buying his time. I look further out and I see the old lion cage where Henry had been, and many boxes and other forgotten de detritus from the massive group of performers that were leaving today. There's even a large bundle of discarded hay towards the back of the room. Hay that I just happen to know come from came from Henry's cage. Oh yeah, I was supposed to throw that out. Oops, well, I can do it later. Or let someone else deal with it. I gotta save Henry and Dad. I get closer, moving softly, but surely towards the other side. But there, right at the back of the room, there was a small shaft of sunlight peeking through the wooden walls. Was there a back entrance? I start to move even closer, hand over hand, shimmering across the ceiling boards. I see the moment Jules sees me, because he gets a surprised look on his face. I stick my tongue out at him. I am the amazing acrobat Amy, after all. Oh my god, girl. You're too into yourself. Now that I've gotten closer, yes, there is a break in the wooden panels back there, exposing the beautiful day it was outside. And in front of the opening is someone wearing a cloak, a hood covering their face. They can see they're holding a bundle in front of them, and their intention is squarely on the conversation Zephyr and Jules are having. 
and let out a breath I didn't know I was holding. Here it was, I just needed to. The figure looks up right at where I'm dangling from the rafters. For a split second, I see her face. It's Colette. Wait. Colette runs out the open and I curse under my breath. Oh my god, Amy, you're so stupid. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yeah, like, you were supposed to be the amazing acrobat, Amy. Do some amazing acrobatics. Get her. I swing my feet back, then forward, quickly picking up momentum. Timing is just right. I let go and land right in the middle of a pile of discarded hay. Without, without, without a second's rest, I push myself up and I'm out of the building, racing after her. Come back here. I sprint as fast as I can, picking loose bits of hay out of my hair and clothing. Colette is up ahead of me. I'm closing the distance between us and she heads straight into the courtyard. We tumble through the crowd, people parting the way for two bodies barreling through them. Closer, closer, but the cobblestones catch me up. Gag, so close. You're supposed to be, like, athletic. And this is a mousy little maid, and you're, like, you're supposed to be strong and athletic and be able to catch her, and yet she's, like, <sighs> no words, no words. Up ahead, I see the black wagons in that cage holding Henry and Dad. There's Mom looking up, trying to see what all the commotion is about. I yell as loud as I can, Mom, stop her! The starry troop mobiles. Mom nods at Dad, who nods back. Dad snaps his fingers and points to Henry. Mom dashes through the crowd, heading to cut off Colette. Dad's hand comes down, and Henry lets out a terrifying roar, shaking the bars around them. The crowd panics, surging to get away from the lion. They run away into Colette, pushing her back and stopping her in her place. And just like that, Mum is in front of her, blocking her path. The crowd has parted, revealing the three of us in the sudden ring of spectators. My legs pick up their pace, eyes locked on my target. Colette, you aren't going to get away again. I push, launching myself at her. Our bodies collide and we tumble forward. She drops the bundle in her hands, is thrown out in front of her. Coins, bills, and a very particular large crystal come tumbling out. The crowd gasps and erupts in noise. The police move in, having seen everything. The necklace that Lady Josephine had lost was found in her maid's belongings. Her maid that had been caught trying to escape. I lay there, catching my breath. Below me, Colette is sobbing. My heart breaks. Why? Why did you frame us? Why would your heart break? I'd be like more like pissed off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wanted, I wanted to live with, he said he could help us escape, to get away so we could live together. Who is he? Rough hands grab me, pulling me up. The police, they grab Colette and haul her to her feet. The policeman starts to pull me to one side. I look back and see Colette. I caught the culprit, but why wasn't I happy? I look up. The policeman pulling me had brought me to Jules. He's there with Zephyr, discussing with a senior-looking policeman. My mother wasn't even attacked. Let this family go. They were framed. The man holding me pushes me away. I stumbled a bit, but Jules catches me. He hugs me. You did it! You caught her! I'm looking over his shoulder, straight at Colette. Her eyes are blank. Her face is white. She keeps her head down. I hug Jules back, but I weep into his shoulder. It was over. It was all over. They had let Henry and my dad go. Now that the focus had shifted from Henry to Colette, the police were no longer interested in charging us with any crime. She had been the one that had baited Henry into scaring Josephine. It had become a story that high society was obsessed with. The head of the Blavar family had been targeted by her closest maid. Stories were written, gossip was started, Jules had offered his help in the first place in order to prevent a scandal. But I'm not sure if we succeeded in that. He wasn't upset. He kept stressing how he was glad that Starry Troop's reputation had been restored. That to him, the fact that we saved my dad and Henry made all of the surrounding headache worth it. That one happy family had made it out unscathed. But everything about it, it didn't sit well in my stomach. Because who had told her to spray Henry with that perfume? Why had Henry reacted in that way? We tested the spray on him days later. No reaction. I brought this information to the police, remembering the way Colette had cried as she had been pinned to the ground. I was turned away at the door. To them, the case was closed and shut. There was nothing else to investigate. They had better things to do. 
Months passed, the Staria troupe continued to tour and perform. From our brief brush with Infamy, our name grew and grew. And one day, Jules reached out to me. He invited me back to that manor where we had first performed for the Boulevards, a redemption, a way to elevate any lingering doubt of our innocence. So we took the offer and we performed. Dad stands in the center of the ring, his hands up in the air, and around him, just out of touch of the crowd, Henry runs around the perimeter. The lion purposefully comes close to the audience, electrifying them, energizing them, showing them that he was no threat. The lion tamer lifts a ball into one of his outstretched hands and throws it dead center into the crowd to where he knows Lady Josephine is sitting. The matriarch of the Blavar family stands up and waves. To her side is Jules, her hair. Josephine lifts up the ball she has caught. Up comes Henry, who jumps up on the berry and leans over. The lion bows to the two Blavars, a delightful new trick for the audience. Josephine laughs while Jules discreetly places his handkerchief in front of his face. Holding the ball between her thumb and forefinger, Josephine carefully presents it to the lion. Henry moves and picks the ball up in his mouth. The lion turns and shows the whole crowd that he has retrieved the ball. The two Blavars, mother and son, reach out and pat the lion on the head. The crowd is ecstatic. More than gossip, more than drama, the crowd demands a good story. I'm packing up the boxes from the performance, finally doing the chores Mum had always been asking me about. It had been a delightful performance, and it was nice to have fond memories associated with this manor. Ah. My, that's a large sigh for such a star performer. Jules! He's holding a bouquet of bright red flowers. I'm here to deliver a gift to amazing acrobat Amy. You're not going to sneeze on me again, are you? Look, it's not my fault you're constantly covered with lion hair. Wow, rude. He hands me the bouquet. How thoughtful. That's from my mother, actually. They've been soaked in our newest perfume. I'm sure your old mother would appreciate them. Wow, and I can't? Hmm. He looks me up and down and shakes his head. Still the same as ever. I see you haven't changed at all either. Which brings me to my own gift. He reaches behind him and pulls out a package. My mother has been asking me about product lines I want to pursue. I take the package from him, admiring the gold and red lace that's tied in a neat bow. And I kept thinking about what you said to me when we first met. That you would never sneeze onto a guest? <laughs> no, not that. Go ahead, open it. I don't waste another moment, I tear it into it. As the wrapping falls away, it's a gorgeous green fabric. You said that you couldn't wear Blavor clothing when you performed, that it was too uncomfortable. It's a new leotard, a gorgeous one at that. The fabric is silky smooth between my fingers. Here, let me help you try it on. Ooh, don't you look pretty? It fits me like a glove. He helped her put that on? Um, isn't that a little bit much? It fits me like a glove, perfectly tailored, and he's still wearing the same gaudy outfit. Perfectly tailored to my body. How did he manage to make it so perfect? I worked hard to re replicate the comfortability of your outfits with our high-end design. My idea for this line was to make the wearer feel comfortable and beautiful at the same time. Well, would this be something you'd be interested in? I want, I want to make you a whole line of them. Speechless is the most beautiful thing anyone has ever done for me, made for me. And I don't know what to say. I, um, too much? Still scratchy? No, it feels nice. I, I just don't know what to say, wow. That good, huh? I rip him in the stomach. Ouch, okay, okay. So, when can I expect the next outfit? I smile at him, he smiles back. It's an honor to be working with you. Likewise. The end, route one of three. Oh, I guess there was, I guess in this game you can romance Claude. And you can also romance Godfrey, depending on where you where you originally went in the beginning. 
So there was the roots of where you went and that would start the whole romance of the one path and you, you can't veer off that path. So yeah, um, I'm not gonna play the other paths, maybe in my own time I will, but um, yeah, there was some things about this game that really frustrated me. But, uh, and then there were other parts of the game that was quite endearing, it was cute. I love the illustrations and the backgrounds and just the, but the writing, some of it was good and some of it was just kind of cheesy and corny and definitely not period piece. And uh, yeah, but interesting characters and I am very interested in Claude's romance path. So I think I'm gonna play that one privately. And if you do like this playthrough and you want to try this game out yourself, I have left the download link below. And uh, if you like this playthrough, please um, hit that like button and do subscribe to Secret Door Gaming. And uh, see you in the next game. Thank you.